So, a bit of old English pronunciation. Um, by way of context for this, uh, I should say that um, to me as a person, um, the pronunciation of Old English is really important. Um, I want to access Old English poetry through the sounds of, of that poetry. I want to be able to reconstruct um, the way that material sounded. Um, and also as a phonologist, as a linguisticist, um, I really like Old English phonology. I like the intellectual challenges of it. Um, I like being able to uh, work out how the language sounded in the past. So I'm really keen on pronouncing Old English well. Um, that said, as a teacher, I'm not too concerned about it. If it's important to you to learn how to pronounce this stuff, if that helps you, if it's part of what motivates you, then I want to help you too. Um, but equally, I'm not too stressed if you, if you just want to pronounce it all your own way. Um, don't worry. But, um, but I'll give you, give you some stuff to work with if you want it. Um, here are some Old English vowels, not all of them, we'll, we'll put a couple more in in a minute. Um, and they're laid out in a vowel diagram that some of you will be familiar with. Uh, it represents a cross section of um, a mouth. Ah, it's not my mouth because it's got big teeth. In fact, it's Grendel's mouth. Well, well anyway, someone's mouth with big teeth. Ah. Um, and um, yes, and these mark where the kind of tip of your tongue goes mostly um, while you're making these sounds in a schematic way. So when you say e, your tongue will be up near the front and the top of your mouth. E, when you say ah, your tongue will be down at the bottom, your mouth will be very open, um, and, and your tongue will be at the back. Um, so this just lays out where these different Old English vowels fall. Um, in modern English, we have funny pronunciations for the graphs of our vowels. Weird stuff has happened. Um, so if you know things like German or Spanish or Finnish, even better, um, but unlikely, I, I recognise. Um, using the vowels from those languages will actually get you further with Old English. It will be more useful. Um, but don't worry too much. Um, Old English vowels all have a long version and a short version. A uh, short version just looks like a normal letter. long one has a line over it. Uh, we call it a macron. Um, that means that these two vowels were pronounced the same. They are each exactly the same sound. The quality is the same but the um, length of time that you say those vowels for is different. You say the long ones for longer. Um, this, is, this feels a bit weird to modern English speakers. Um, it doesn't really match our phonology, though some of us will have uh, length distinctions in our vowels. Um, depending on my accent of the day, like if you've got your South London accent on, you'll actually have a, a distinction between Dan and Dan. Dan went Dan the tan to get a tan. Um, tan and tan, that kind of thing, um, as in town and tan. Um, tan, tan, dan, dan. So we do this sort of thing a bit in modern English. But here's e and e, e and e, a and a, o and o, o and o, a and a. Old English vowels, winner. Um, the a, 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 a distinction is a bit unfamiliar to to us in, in modern English, so you might need to kind of work on that. Um, nice northern vowels up here, o and o, not a, like in the south. Um, there's also e and e. Um, if you know any Scandinavian languages, these will be okay. Also, if you know German with the u with an umlaut, um, that's it's that sound. Um, these are pronounced in the same place, same position as these, but you round your lips as if you're going to whistle. So basically, you pretend you're going to whistle, and then you try and say E. 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 That's that sound. Um, e. E. Um, so Old English has, has that as well, among its vowels. Um, Old English also has diphthongs, which is when you put two vowel sounds together in one syllable. Um, these, as spelt, look like eo. The precise reconstruction of that is a bit tricky, but you can just say i and an o next to each other, that will do fine. Eo. Um, and the stress is always on the first one. It's not yo, it's eo. Eo. And this one, which is spelt funny, but seems to be pronounced ow, um, seems actually to be. Ah, 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 
Um, and again, the, the, well, these are falling diphthongs. The stress is on the first element. One talks about Beowulf, not Beowulf, or something crazy like that, Beowulf. Um, groovy. Um, Old English diphthongs can be long and short as well, which is pretty crazy. Um, so sometimes you'll see them with these lines over. Um, so there's a difference between eo and eo, eo and eo, ao and ao. Just a little bit longer. That's actually really hard to do, so don't worry about it. Um, and finally, you get this kind of graph knocking around in Old English, which, oh, let's write it here, looks like that, I and an E, or might have a line over it. And we just don't know how that was pronounced. Um, there's lots of debates. Well, th there are lots of people who think they know how it was pronounced, but they all have different ideas, which kind of you know, makes you worry. Um, so when you see an I and an E next to each other, you can do what you like. You can say ear if you like. Um, I just pronounce it the same as this E because we know that these sounds turned into these sounds later in Old English. So we know that some Anglo-Saxons were saying E in the same position where we find these written. Um, so I pronounce that as e and e. Um, see what you like. Those are your vowels. Um, I'll come back in another video for consonants. And then, in fact, I won't. Consonants are really quick. Uh, you've already met those crazy letters thorn and ev. So you know how to pronounce those. Th at the beginning or the end of a word. Th in the middle. There are a couple of exceptions, but that pretty much works. Um, so th at the beginning or the end. Th in the middle. Um, and uh, if you get two consonants next to each other, you pronounce them both, which feels, again, weird to a modern English speaker. Um, I've got this crap pen, which is really annoying. So you get old English words like sithun, not sithun, but sithun. You say them both, sithun, sithun, not sithun. Um, Old English word for to have. It'd be tempting as a modern English speaker to say haben, but it's hubbum. Two B's, hubbum. Think kind of Italian. Spaghetti might help. Um, Italians have long consonants too. Many languages do. Hubbum. Um, another way of thinking of it is like in pen knife. You don't say pen knife, just one N, pen knife. You say pen knife. Mmm. Okay, and that's uh, my quick guide to Old English pronunciation. Hope you find it useful. Obviously, practicing it with text uh, will, will be a bit slow at first. Your tongue will feel strange. But if you want to have a go, um, hopefully that will give you a, a, a basis for doing it. Thanks very much. Enjoy Old English. Enjoy the magic sheet. And uh, I look forward to seeing you about if you're not just some kind of weird denizen of internet land who I don't know. Um, or maybe I'll look forward to you even then. R rock and roll. Okay, bye. <laughs>